Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and we're here with another the journal make. Now, the last journal we made, which was the cereal box cover journal, um, lots of great feedback, thank you very much, yes, yes we did really well with this. Um, I thought, right, staying with trying to support our beginners or newbies, I thought, right, let's do another one that's in the same sort of feel but using another thing as its base. So let's put this to one side because I might need this in a little while anyway. Let's put it up there out of the way. Now, um, it's a very popular thing to make journal covers out of manila envelopes or clasp envelopes or envelopes in general. Now, it depends on which country you're in. It'll depend on what size envelopes are available to you versus what size paper you're using. Now, here in the UK, we have paper that is, let's do this in inches because I can't, I can't do centimetres very well. It's about just over eight and a quarter by just over eleven and a half. Now, I know in the States are a different size again. So, so just be aware that paper sizes alter and normally for making an envelope cover, I would normally go to something like... Um, a 9 by 12 envelope, I can't get them, or if I do it's very rare. So this one is actually almost 13 inches and this is almost 10 inches. However, I do find that here I can get white envelopes that are fractionally smaller. If I fold the edge over, a fractionally smaller and these ones are actually just about 12 and 3 quarters by 9. So if we look at this one first, and then I'll tell you how you can alter the other one. So if I bring that piece of paper back in, if you can see now, if this was my page on the inside of here, it's probably not the best thing white on white, but you'll get what I mean. Um, I actually have a reasonable margin around there, and I don't mind that. So that's why I tend to use the white envelopes, because they're slightly smaller. Now, if I do want to make this into a 9 by 12 and it's easily done, it's just you need to do a bit more fiddling before you do it. So first of all, I need to know that it's going to be 12 inches is what I need. So I'm going to grab a pencil. I pulled a pencil out. Where did I put the pencil? There's a pencil. So if I mark this at 12, it's pretty much where this edge is here. So I'm just going to draw a line down there and then I want this to be nine inches. Hopefully I'm in shot for all of this, guys. I do have a slightly different setup. I'm trying something new. I've, I've raised my work table and I've raised the arm of the camera to make it more comfortable for myself. But I'm also hoping that means that I'll be able to get a, capture a bigger space on my desk. So, right, so now this is, that way it's 12 inches. And that way it's nine inches okay so I obviously need to trim this down slightly so let's put the ruler by so first things first I'm gonna actually just take off the outer edge of here I could use a trimmer I'm just using the scissors for this one instant I do have a trimmer we'll be using in a minute anyway so I'm gonna cut that bit down and I'm gonna take this piece off because it's unnecessary I'm then going to snip the sides of this. Come here. You'd think I could open an envelope, wouldn't you? I'm just going to snip the sides up there. And the same at this end. To where that mark is. I'm going to fold these over just so I've got a bit of a guideline. I'll fold it over. That was about the worst fold I could ever have done. Right, and then I'm going to snip this off. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be out of there, basically. Because all I'm doing is just adjusting the size of the envelope. Because not all of us have access to the things that are the perfect fit to start with. So it's always good to know that there is a way around it. So let me just grab, grab myself a glue stick. So now, if I fold this up and try to get it as straight as possible. I mean, if you're folding these ends over, you should end up with a straight fold anyway. And then just get a bit of book page. Let's see what I can do with this. Um, and I'm literally going to 
Oh, it's a new glue stick. I wonder where my old one went. So, oh, it's Biscuit and the flipping postman, I tell you. That dog gets so excited when he hears the postman. And it's certainly not, it's not a hatred thing, it's a loving thing. He loves the postman. But he always has to say hello in a very loud, barky voice. So, right, so I've glued this bit down. So that then gives me my measurement of 12 inches. Am I worried about that? No, because I'm going to be collaging over the top anyway. And I need to do the same on, get off me. I need to do the same on the bottom edge. I'll slip that off there. Now you're probably asking yourself, why did I do the end and then glue it? Um, why didn't I just cut the sides at the same time? Because this way I'm keeping the integrity of the envelope. Or I would if I could flip him while open this thing. What is it with me today? I just can't, can't seem to grip paper today. So snipping up the side there and coming down and doing exactly the same thing at this end. And as I did before, I'm just going to take off the excess because I don't want the extra bulk. It's going to do nothing except make the spine a little harder to fold, if anything. Um, and I, the way I do envelope covers anyway, I, I already support them in other manners, so I don't really want to have that bit hanging over. So take that out of the way, throw it in the bin come on and glue this again. I know this is probably you're thinking why is he showing it to us twice because I want to make sure that we all are exactly on the same page as to what I'm doing to prepare the entire envelope. Okay come in again fold it up fold it up fold it up so this will now give me my cover. Now um, when it comes to this end here I usually, if it's got a metal clip on it, I usually just rip that piece off because I don't, I don't want a piece of metal in the middle of my envelope. Let's get rid of that. So I'm now going to come in and I'll just stick that down with a bit of glue. I'm not overly bothered, as I said, because all of the edges all the way along here are going to be going to be collaged over eventually anyway. So there you go. So that gives you how I turn an envelope into something that would be the right size for the piece of paper. I always use the white ones. That just shows you how to amend it. So let's put that over there. Let's put lid back on the glue. Now let's start work on the real journal. Let's get rid of this glue page. Oh, loud noise, sorry about that. Let's get rid of this glue page. So I have my envelope here. Um, we're going to do this bit by bit all the way through. So first thing I would say is recommend folding over the flap at the end because sometimes these aren't pre-folded and if you wait till you've got glue on it, it can sometimes make a mistake. Now, when you fold this over, you'll have a journal um, cover. Now, you can leave this open. You could even tuck that in, leave it open, and then you have a pocket either on the front cover or the back cover. That's not something I'm going to do in this journal, but just know that there is a way of doing that. So, first thing I want to do, I'm because I'm a little, I get a little anxious that journals may fall apart or may not be as secure as I want them, I like to add a bit of support into this. So what I do is I take a bit of spare 12 by 12. It doesn't matter to me in the slightest. Um, it's usually... I wouldn't say, I would call it more of an unfortunate one, one I'm not going to use. And I come in, I'm just going to put that down slightly in from the top, put a mark there, and this will fit exactly into this envelope. There'll be a little bit of an edge on there. I'm not overly worried about that. You could, if you wish, um, reinforce that, but I know that I want the strength of it more in the middle. So I'm just going to bring in the big old guillotine. You know me, I... I like a guillotine. I'm not I'm not a lover of using the old trimmer. That's just I sat right down there. Obviously that can be reinforcement for something else or used for something else in the future. So this piece is going to just slide in here and add a little more support. It would if I can get it in the envelope. It's not going to be a good good tutorial today if I can't work stuff. So there you go, it's in there. 
as you can see it comes to about here I'm not worried if that's slightly softer that's okay with me let's get put this to one side now something else I want to do before I even start this is I'm going to put a bit of glue down the middle of this now it does make it slightly tricky to get it in the envelope but I just like to put a little bit of extra glue just down the middle just because that's the bit that's going to be where the spine is and I'd like to have that secured in the middle of my envelope just because there's going to be some folding and stuff to do so I'm going to slide this in again now if I lift up the envelope I'll have no trouble sliding that in if I really wanted to I could go in and I know where the edge of this fold is I can leave it just sticking out just a little bit and give it a bit of a press down that way I've now secured that it's not going to move around it's giving me a bit more heft to it as my friend Gail would call it I'm going to come in and I'm going to glue down this top edge or glue down the flap now as I said you could very easily um, leave this open as a pocket and I've seen some lovely pockets on journals with that I, I just don't normally do that so it's just me being me so that's folded over flatten it out so we now have the basis for our journal cover now where this is glued in it doesn't matter whether it's the inside or it's the outside your choice entirely the next thing I want to do is I want to fold my cover over I want to make sure it's completely square at the edges or as square as I can you will sometimes find if you're buying an envelope from an inexpensive store that sometimes they're not all envelopes are created perfectly equal should we say sometimes you find there's maybe a slightly slightly off on one side but it's nothing that you can't manage so give that a good press down now you will always find something's going to happen in the middle but that's why I wanted to put this here so it holds all in place this is all going to be covered I'm not going to stress about it I'm not going to worry about it now there's a reason why I wanted to know where the center of this is and that is because I've cut myself a bit of thin fabric now this could be anything from a pillowcase to um, a bit of old sheet it's it's just a really thin fabric but I just want that little bit of extra strength in here now I'm going to trim these edges off I think actually no maybe I can fold them over I was going to say because I don't want them rolled up that lad extra bulk I think we'll be okay actually now I've cut this approximately two inches wide and I want to take my pencil I know where the center mark is because I've got the fold and I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a mark one inch either side now hopefully this is in the right place because I'm now trying to look at it not through the camera in fact because the camera is so high I can no longer see what I'm doing so I'm hoping in all of these videos I'll now be centralized I'll be upset if I ha I'm not so I'm just going to draw those down that will give me a rough guide as to where um, this will sit when I put it in place okay so that's that stage done now I'm going to put this down with a bit of Fabri-Tac um, if I can find the Fabri-Tac where have I put the Fabri-Tac I have the Fabri-Tac out you know just when you think you've prepared everything you haven't prepared anything so I'm going to come in I'm going to put Fabri-Tac down here now just to protect my work surface a little bit where's that old book again just because I'm I don't want to have to stop and start cleaning up the workspace I'm now using my Tim Holtz mat purely because it's easier as a cleanup zone um, I will jump between different mats as and when I need to now I'm going to use Fabri-Tac because obviously we're using fabric um, there are other reasons why as well um, I like the strength it gives I like the durability it gives um, there's one thing about any glue that you put on that you're going to put fabric over the top of the wetter the fat uh, the wetter the glue the more you're going to see the fabric through it now you have noted that I actually didn't cut this to exactly the right length that was on purpose because it's easier for me to trim it afterwards so I'm just going to come in I'm going to lay this down 
as close to central as I can. Now I could have gone in and smeared the glue out first should I wanted, but I'm hoping that it's not going to be seen. And we've got we've got um, the spine sewn into this anyway. If you wanted to, you could easily have used um, a nice pretty sorry about the scraping noise, a nice pretty fabric on the inside of this. Again, up to you entirely. I'm just using this. Um, what's what's the name of that fabric? I'm trying to think what it is. Things like really thin, thin quilting fabric or feed sack type fabrics, any of those things will do. There you go. Now it's in place. I'm just going to run a little bit of a line of glue down either side because I just judged the two inch mark with the tear of the fabric. So I just want to make sure that I've got this edge down. Now this edge is going to be covered eventually when I put the inside pa uh, insides of the spine in. Oh, typical, stuck it to my glue book. So, should have changed the page, obviously. A little bit more down here. So this is actually just creating the foundation for my um, cover. I, I tend to like to work and make sure that they're as robust as possible because I don't know about you, but when I'm journaling, my journal goes through, goes through a lot. I mean, it's in and out of bags. It's used at trains, planes and automobiles. It's, it's, it's used a lot. So let's take that off of there. So. Now, normally I would let that dry for a little bit, but because you're all watching, we're going to get straight on and do it. Um, I'm going to come in now. I'm just going to trim off the edge of here just to make that flush. This can go in the snippets box. You yeah, never know when that's going to turn up. I mean, if you do have any of this thin fabric left over, don't forget, guys, you can stamp onto this. Use archival links and stamp images and words on them. They're just an interesting piece to use. So I'm not going to fold that for a moment. I'm going to let that be. So now we've got the strength there just to hold everything together. I've got the strength on the inside as well. So I'm going to start work on the outside now. Now, for this bit, I'm going to collage. Um, you could use an entire... 12 by 12, you could use some papers, you could do it all, all in one piece, you could wrap it in fabric, and maybe in the future we'll do a fabric wrap one. But for this one, I wanted to use collage. Now, so just moving my glue back out of the way. Now, I did have, where has it gone? I have got one of these mats, so I don't want to get um, glue all over the workspace I'm working on. I did have a comment, which I thought was an interesting comment, off one of the subscribers last to last month to this journal who was slightly disappointed that they didn't see me do the collage process now i didn't do the collage process purely because sorry about the noise i'm bringing in my drawers of bits and pieces to collage with which you'll have a look at in a moment um i didn't collage because i thought it was going to take quite a while to do and it does take quite a while to do so i'm going to try and do this live well, life. I'm going to film me collaging it. I am going to speed up the process so you see it. Um, although there'll be no music or talking underneath because I haven't actually learned how to do that yet. Okay. Also, if it looks like it's going on too long, I'll probably start the collage, clip the middle bit out and put it, put the rest of it in later. Something you probably do need to know is when I'm collaging, I tend to collage all of the edges first. Because once the edges are done, I can fold them round to the inside and then I tend to come in and collage the centre piece here. Now to collage with, with, in this version, I'm using Mod Podge. You could use a matte medium, you could use like Tim Holtz's collage medium. It's whatever you wish it to be. I find this gives it more body and some flexibility and, and I just enjoy using it. So I'm going to have my Mod Podge to one side. I'm also using my little credit card smoother just to smooth stuff out. Um, I'm going to do around the edges. Also, when it comes to going across the spine, make sure you don't do anything that is too close to the spine. Try to really overlap the spine because anything that's too close to the spine, join wise, as you fold it, it's likely to snap up if you haven't stuck it down properly. So 
Here we go guys, I'm just gonna go for it. What you heard me pulling out was these two drawers. These two drawers are just full of all of my different scraps for all of the different stuff I do. So that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna go for it. Um, as I said, I'm not gonna be talking because I'm gonna be trying to fill in some of this, uh, speed up some of this. So hopefully that's okay with everyone. So here we go, let's have some fun with this. So guys, as you can see, I'm quite liberal with the Mod Podge when I put it on there. Most of this wrinkling that you're seeing will actually flatten out when everything dries because I've got a mixture of different different um, thicknesses and textures of paper. Now, at one point you did see me put down um, something that looked like this. It was only when I put it down did I realise it's actually a plastic base. So I took it back off and that's why I put that piece in there. Now, I do need to let this dry. Um, something else, by the way, you saw me using my scraper. I scraped not only to take, put the air bubbles out, but I also then um, scraped it off my Mod Podge bottle just to put some back. So I'm going to have to let this dry for a little while. And then once this is totally dry, we'll turn this over and then we'll fold over all of the ends. Actually, just realising there's no piece there. So, so I'm going to have to put a piece there to go over the top edge. So... Is that going to be about, yeah, that'll be about the right width. So, thank goodness I turned it over is all I can say, because then I noticed there wasn't a bit. So, yeah, and the reason I put um, Mod Podge on this, for me, is purely down to durability, wear and tear. Um, it sort of makes it waterproof to a certain extent. I mean, you couldn't drop it in a river or anything like that. But if you were caught out in the rain and the cover got a little splash of rain water you found you would find that it actually wouldn't affect it very much at all I mean it would wipe off it would wipe dry because the Mod Podge is actually a seal so we're going to set this here I'm just going to turn the camera off for a little bit um, probably about 15 to 20 minutes and this will be dry so I'm just going to leave it here and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish in I'm going to tidy up some of this just so that in the interim things don't dry out so here we are back again. It's been about 10 minutes. It's dry enough to the touch. Um, Mod Podge does dry quite quickly. Um, things like Tim Holtz Collage Medium dries even quicker. You could use a matte medium. You could use a glue stick, but good old glue stick. And then um, 
put mod Podge or seal over the top completely up to you I just want to do this as quick as I can because I don't like to do a video more than an hour when it comes to this so turning this over as you can see now we've got all of the edges to work with I like to go along and I like to pre-fold all of the edges so that I know that they will fold when they're glued because there's nothing worse than getting to the point where you want to glue something down and it's not folding properly so I go along and I fold all of the edges just my way of doing it I mean there are umpteen ways of doing this process I'm sure I've seen many many other people do these as well um, as, as I always say to you guys I really do encourage you guys to look at other people's makes pick as many different techniques as you can pick from anyone else and then find one that actually works for you now when it comes to the corners I'm likely to put book corners on these but I'm going to come in and I'm just going to snip across the corners I'm not completely up against the edge there in fact I could probably take that a little bit closer than that so I've got just a little bit I've left spare because I'm going to fold that little bit in and I'm going to do that on each of these edges uh, corners sorry just so that I can have a nice clean clean arrangement on the corners but as I said I am likely to put book corners in on this um, I tend to do that with my envelope journals because it makes them a little more robust so I'm going to come back in now with the Mod Podge and my credit card smoother and my paintbrush which I have kept in a, a damp cloth while we were doing while I was doing the drying time just so that I didn't get any any drying up of the stuff that's actually on my brush so putting that on there and now I'm going to pull this over making sure it comes really nicely up tight up against that edge and I definitely definitely want to come with my, my scraper my smoother whatever you want to call it I want to make sure that I've got all of that nicely in contact if there's any bits that look like they're lifting up like by there just make sure it's all pulled in so I tend to do the ends first don't know why it's, I don't even know that there's there's a reason for that except it just happens to be the way I do it um, normally I find by this point most of my outside pages have actually stuck to themselves but if they haven't when you push those over the top make sure you make sure there's some glue in here as well so that they each stick to each other as well as the envelope itself again come in I'm gonna pull this in with a credit card or a smoother you could use a silicone smooth if you've got a silicone smooth at hand now when it comes to these corners I'm just gonna make sure so my Mac keeps moving around it's annoying me I don't know if it's annoying you I just want to push that little bit in just so that when I fold it I've got a nice clean fold just like to put a little bit of glue into those areas there so it's not essential it's just a meism, if that is such a word in the world so and that one's naturally done it itself I think so I'm going to come in now and I'm going to work my way now I want to make sure that there's some stuck on here because obviously um, that's where the spine is I want to make sure that everything's going to be glued down really really nicely And there's going to be no movement it's going to be nice and supported again come in with my um, credit card thing I'm going to go under this edge because I want to make sure that's nicely glued down as well it feels very weird to me to be doing this with the camera up there and I can't see through it so I don't know how this is looking, how it's feeling or anything. It's just, for me, it's a bit of an odd one. It, I'll get used to it, obviously. Unlike anything you get used to, it just feels, it feels peculiar for me. But um, the reason for it was I, I heightened my work table because I was finding, because it was a dining room table height and I'm six foot one and I do all of my filming standing up. I was finding that I was beginning to get back issues and no, nah, I'm not going to deal with back issues. So, so yes, yeah, so I basically have heightened my table so that 
I don't have back issues in the future. I do tend to, even when the camera's not on, I tend to do a lot of my artwork standing up. I don't know why, I just always do. Um, it's a weird thing. I don't know, I think we all have our working preferences. I think it probably comes from, a piece is peeled up. I think it probably comes from my fact that I'm a cake decorator and designer as well. And you, you basically stand up all the time when you're working with cake. That's pretty much everything I do is, is stood up. So it feels weird to be sitting down. So now I'm not worried about this area because we're gonna have, um, stuff put into there it is worth at this point just making sure everything is fully fully stuck down i wonder what this bit is that's peeling off around here it's just that little edge there so it's really worth taking your time to see if there's any bits lifting up this is the time to deal with them while everything is still wet um if you get wrinkles they will dry out and usually stretch back out but to be honest, I don't really care because it's like the other side has got some wrinkles on it. And if they don't dry out, they don't dry out. This is just a background of a junk journal. I'm probably going to put something on the front cover anyway. I mean, yes, I'd like it to be absolutely smooth, but also in the same same breath, it doesn't need to be. So right, let's smooth that down, make sure it's all nicely in contact. So we're going to have to take another break, guys, just while that dries off. So I'm going to let that one, it doesn't look like it's stuck properly there. Depending on what card or paper stock you've used will depend on how well it sticks with different mediums. Um, I usually find things like book page will ripple but stick very easily. Um, things that are shiny tend not to stick as well. Card stock tends to stick but needs some serious encouragement. So just be aware, there are, there are different things to look out for. So I'm going to leave this now probably for another 10 minutes just to make sure that that's nicely dried. I'll put my lid on my Mod Podge so it doesn't dry out. Wrap my paintbrush just in a damp cloth so it doesn't dry out either. And I will see you in a few minutes, guys. Just have a bit of a tidy up here. And while I'm thinking about it, I will start thinking about what I want to put there, which is going to be what design papers there. So I'm just going to think about that as well. I will see you in a minute. OK, guys, so we're back. We're, I would say, 99% dry. I can still feel a little bit of dampness in this in the palm of my hand, but I'm not worried about it. So if I fold this over, this gives us our journal cover. Now, I'm going to... Um, Put something on the front anyway. Um, this little wrinkle in the back, if it really bothers me when this is fully dried out, I'll just collage another piece over the top. It's There's always a solution to every problem. So we don't need this anymore, which is good because it's annoying me moving around all the time. Um, on the inside of here, I've got myself a piece of scrapbook card. Um, if it's the same size as my piece of paper, and I just cut it in half, and I'm going to stick these down on the insides. Um, I don't really want to put a whole piece across there because then that adds more bulk to the center. And remember, we're already sewing a signature into there. So this this is the signature that's going in there. Um, so it's hardly going to be seen anyway, and I'd rather not clog up the spine too much. Now, before I stick these in, there's some things you need to think about depending on how you want your journal to um, evolve, let's say. So put these to one side. So if you're someone who likes sewing, this is the time at which you could get a sewing machine and go all the way around the edge of this. However, it's a not a necessary step. You don't need to do it. It's, it's a nice aesthetic, should we say. Um, as far as the cover goes, remember the collage is purely a background and I would always expect to put something on the front like I did with this one. I put something on the front with a bit of a label so that it can be named for somebody. This one, what I did is I went through, because I make postcards, I found this postcard and I really liked the way that tied in. And I liked the fact that, well, I just liked everything about this. However, on there it looks a little bit lost. So I then had a look around and found this bit of fabric, which I really liked. Now it looks a lot at the moment, but the moment you do that, it just gives it a really interesting edging. So what I think we're going to do is, now 
I'm going to put this in place with Fabritac because obviously we've got Mod Podge, we've got Fabric, we've got Card, all this going on. But I'm going to hold it in place with this, but then I am going to sew mine. Um, just to show you what different things look like. You could glue this down and never sew it and it's perfectly okay. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it around the edge of the card, which will then hold this in place. And I'm going to sew around the edge of the entire journal, just so you can see the difference between sewing and non-sewing. And the reason I want to do that before I put this, um, the front piece in, is because obviously the stitching will show through here. So that's my next step. Um, I'm not going to sew on camera. Because if I saw on camera, you're just going to be seeing the sewing machine. That was right that way around, wasn't it? Sewing machine from above and hearing a sewing machine going. And that gets really, really boring. So I'm going to stick that in place with a little bit of this. Um, just, I don't want to do it while you're turned on the camera. Because I can't look down on it myself. I need to do it so I'm above. So I'll do that. Sew around there. I'm probably just going to do a regular straight stitch. And a regular straight stitch around there and then when we come back we can actually then look at putting the inside pieces in i might put corners on it at that point and we'll be looking at sewing it in as well so back in a second guys so here we are guys all sewn around so as you can see well, hopefully you can see um it does add a bit of character but it's absolutely a non-necessary step and i have sewn around here and again it's a non-necessary step this over time will fray and become a lot more interesting visually which is why i didn't want to stick down the edge of the fabric now i've used this here if i'd have been planning ahead which i didn't plan ahead i could have used that same fabric on the inside of here which would have given me a little more interest and a carry through of the design so that fabric there could easily have been that fabric there because it's a thin cotton fabric anyway so next step next step so we're now going to look at the inside now as i said i did pull out these um from a paper pad and i've got them i quite like them and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to sew them so them. i'm not going to sew them at all i'm going to glue them into place now i know where the center is now the way I've sewn this, I have a line down the side that I can actually line these up with. Not intentional, that just happened to be the way it is. Um, however, if you do feel you need to put a pencil line or something down the side, that's fine. A lot of the time, I just eyeball it anyway, to be honest with you, because the front and the back are always going to be blocked from view by the... I wish I'd stop pulling that piece in. Um, are going to be blocked by the signature anyway, so you're never going to see them side by side. Now, um, I'm not using Mod Podge for the inside here. Don't need to. There's not really that need to do it. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to use Art Glitter Glue on the edges and I'm going to use a glue stick on the center. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to put glue stick in the center of this because this isn't going to have the wear and tear that the cover has. Well, it shouldn't have the wear and tear that the cover has anyway, um, but I do want it to be adhered to the envelope if I can. Oops, all over the place with that glue stick. So sorry about the tapping. If it annoys anyone, I apologize. And then I'm going to pull in my art glitter glue and I'm going to put that around the edges because art glitter glue will hold it down. You could, I believe, use Fabri-Tac as well. Um, I just happen to like art glitter glue. I like the fact that it grips quite quickly. You could also use double-sided tape for this. I probably do double-sided. I'm going to put a bit more there because I've missed it with the glue stick. Um, I would probably put double-sided tape in the middle but I would still put Fabri-Tac around the edges but that's just me being hugely overly cautious. So I'm going to come in, turn that around, make sure it's the right way up. There's not a lot of wiggle time when it comes to our glitter glue. So I'm going to put it in. I'm just going to smooth it down with my hand. Encourage it to lay flat. And I'm just going to use the same smoother I used before. Just to smooth out any lumps that I may have in the glue stick that I put on. Because there's not likely to be any lumps in the, um, the art glitter glue because it's a liquid. So and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this one. Oops, why is it with me holding things today? So hopefully this has given you another idea, guys. Now, anything I'm teaching you in these videos or sharing with you, I don't really want to say teaching, I'm just sharing, really. Um, I just the way 
I do things. Um, the way that make me feel confident that the stuff I've done is going to stand the test of time, that is going to be stuck down and isn't going to come off, or um, is going to be robust enough to be handled, travelled, written in, stuck in, everything. Um, and that's probably, some of that's due to my anxiety. Um, but to be honest with you, you could probably do less than I'm doing as far as all the gluing and sticking and reinforcing. It just, as I said, it just, it's what works for me. And I do, as I always say to everyone, I always encourage you to look at other people's videos. I know there's lots of people do that. I know Gail Gustinelli, and you've heard me talk about Gail a lot because we're friends. She very often does envelope journal covers. And hers, I believe, are slightly different than mine. Is that coming up? I need a little bit under there. It's another reason I like Art Litter Glue. It's got this really fine nozzle. Applicator tip, whatever you want to call it. So there you go. So we've got the inside done and the outside done. Now I'm going to put that pin back in my Art Litter Glue because goodness knows. Uh, oh, that was lucky first time. Um, I tend to leave glue out and it goes sticky and goopy and it's nasty on me. So we've got the inside done, we've got the outside done. Um, before I do the signature, I'm just going to deal with the corners as well. Purely because um, I did say we were going to put them on. And I like putting corners on um, covers that are slightly less robust. Like if this was a recycled book, or these were made out of thick grey board or grey card, or recycled covers from another book maybe without the spine, then I wouldn't worry about it. And I'm not worried really, but... Do you know what I mean? I'm just being cautious. So I've got some generic book corners. I just buy mine online. I do like the Tim Holtz ones. However, um, these are just ones I've got. When I'm looking for book corners for this sort of cover, I don't know if you can see it close enough. Um, these can be cinched really narrowly, like to an narrow edge. Some book corners have a thick sidebar and it's a little trickier, so I always buy ones that I can actually press these down and they'll be directly in place and go flush to the book. So I'm going to start at the back, because I always start at the back. I've got an old book in place because I don't want to press down onto my thing. Oops, I just realised I need to get um, my small pliers. One second. Sorry about that. I just needed to pick these up. I find these a lot easier to use than just cinching it with my hands. I just feel like they need some oil. So I'm going to use my um, Fabri-Tac and I'm going to put a line of Fabri-Tac on the inside of here. Or what if it would come out? You know when you get to that lower third of your bottle of Fabri-Tac and it starts to get thick? That's where I'm at with this Fabri-Tac. I should really just decant it into the next bottle. And I'm going to come in and I can give that a press down with my thumb. Um, I can also come in and just press it down with the end of these pliers or to be honest with you I like to come in and I just give it a bit of a squeeze just to make sure it's fully in contact all the way along. Now the um, glue is only there as a fail safe but as you see it just gives you a nice finish. So I've got four of those to do so bear with me while we get those in place. Let me know if this new camera um, mat setup is working, by the way, guys, because as I said, I've changed, as you can see, from the way I normally work, and I'm hoping it's working for you. It's kind of working for me, except the fact that I do have a tendency now to headbutt the camera, because um, the iPad is actually directly in line with my forehead, whereas before it used to be in line with my chest, so I could see into it. I'm just wiping away the excess glue just so I don't have an issue with it. Didn't it come out on the other side? No, it didn't. Just checking it's not oozed out anywhere. Where have I put the book corners? There you go. Um, so yeah, let me know whether that's working for you guys. I'm, I'm trying to make sure my videos are all nice and clear and easy to see and and that the volume on the microphone is right and me just being me I'm just trying to make sure that everything is working as well as I can because if it if I'm going to do the videos I want to do the videos to the best of my abilities and if you're going to be watching my videos 
but you are, thank you. Um, I want you to have the best experience you can have because otherwise you're not going to enjoy them, you're not going to come back and I'm not going to enjoy making them. So to clean off the outside just because there's none on there, some on there sorry. And last corner and then we can look at getting the signature sewn in. And I'm going to sew the signature in slightly different than I did the last time. Where's the lid to the fabric tack? There you go. I'm going to sew it in slightly different to it I did last time because I'm trying to give you options or a variety of choices in how you achieve your own personal journals. So in there just cinching this down again. And just wipe off a little bit of the excess glue. I would rather wipe away the excess glue than have too little glue in there and worry that it's not stuck. So right, let's put that over there. I'll need that in a second. So you can see that's really changed the character once again and I think with the stitching and if you haven't got a sewing machine it's not essential, absolutely not essential. Um, I do know there are inexpensive sewing machines out there if you really fancied it. You could also maybe look at um, sites where they sell reconditioned ones or maybe it's something on your Christmas wish list. Um, completely up to you, you never know, you might have a family member who's got a sewing machine that is sat in their attic and they've not actually used it for years. But you don't know about that unless you ask about it. So right, put the cover to one side a second and I want to come in with the signature. Now the signature this time I'm just using coffee dyed paper and a few other elements. So I've got 15 pages. So I've got, let's see if I can open this up. If I open this up. There's, there's 15 pages in total. So that all of that adds up to 15, which when you fold it becomes 30 pages, which then becomes 60 sides. I think I've got that right. I'm really, really bad at math. So um, that's what we're aiming for. So what I've done is I've got coffee dyed, coffee dyed, coffee dyed. I put a bit of graph paper in there. I like variety. Coffee dyed, coffee dyed, coffee dyed, coffee dyed. I put another bit of graph paper in. Um, I like to mix it up with the papers, more graph paper. Now this here, this was actually a card blank from card making. So I put that in there because that makes an interesting element as well. And just some more coffee dyed papers. Um, I could put anything in here from map. I could put anything I want. The only thing I want to make sure is that the card, because it's not the same height, is relatively centered. Okay, now I'm going to come in and I know we're going to clip this onto the cover to sew it, but I want to just clip this in place so it doesn't actually all move around with me. Now the added thing is nothing in here is directional, so I don't have to make sure I've got up is up and the down is down and all that. Now I'm going to come in, now I'm going to do this slightly differently than I did the last one. So let's bring that in. I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm going to make a mark about three quarters of an inch from the top, about three quarters of an inch from the bottom and then I'm going to go from that mark, I'm going to give myself a two inch space and from that mark I'm going to give a two inch space. Okay, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, two inch, two inch, I don't give a hoot about the middle. Okay, this is just another variety of stitching. It's one I use, I don't even know whether it's a formal way of doing it. It's just it's something I like to do. So I'm going to bring in the cover now. I'm going to put this in now. Another reason I've done the stitching is because I can line this line the signature up with the stitching. So I'm just going to come in, clip that down, come in and clip that down, or I would if I could get hold of it. So I'm looking to make sure that it's pushed right down into the base there, guys. I'm not liking this size clip. We'll not do this with a bigger clip. Yeah, that's better. So I just want to make sure that that's pushed. See there, I'm pushing my thumb in to move all the papers into that gap. Bring another one of these in. You want to make sure everything is absolutely lined up and square, which it's not. Okay, something has moved. Why is that moving? Right, another trick, I'm going to put a small bulldog clip on the end of each, each of these pages just to try and hold it in place for me. 
some days you have a good day, some days you have a bad day, guys. So this one just wasn't playing for me. So again, I'm going to come in, make sure it's really pushed down into that gap, into the spine, and I'm going to put the first clip in. I'm going to turn my book. I like to work in opposites. I find I get a better finish on it. Make sure that's straight. So again, I'm pinching my thumb down into there, and then that means I can just clip that in. This one doesn't feel right to me. This bit is worth fiddling with. It's worth getting it right, guys, because if you don't get it right, you just don't get it right. And it'll be obvious when you actually finish the journal. So do spend the time getting this bit all nice and tucked in straight. Everything, everything, absolutely everything should be to the spine. Sorry, if I'm, if I'm over laboring that, it's because to me that's quite an important step. So when I fold it, it needs to all fold properly. Let's move that out a bit. So I've now got that into the spine. This buckling here a bit is just because I've got these clamps on the end, so I can take these off now. So let's put those to one side. Now we're going to be piercing the holes right the way through and through the spine. So I've got the book that I normally normally use to pierce into. It's probably about time I got a new one of these too. There are book piercing um, cradles out there. I think Crafty Cat USA does one. Um, I've just never got around to getting it. So I'm closing the book quite a bit. I'm not worried about this little bit. This is the other side. And I'm taking my awl, that's A-W-L, and I'm pressing down at where I marked it all the way through the spine and out the other side. Again, all the way through and out the other side. All the way through and out the other side. Oops, I just hit you with my head. Yeah, I did. All the way through and out the other side. So just want to turn this around to see that I've got the holes I have. I'm just going to re-establish them from the other side, just so that they're a little bit larger. I've got wax thread, so it's one, two, three. I'm doing four lengths. Don't really need four lengths, but I like to have four lengths. Gives me just a bit more wiggle room. Thread isn't that expensive, and that little bit extra can be put into my stash. So I've now got the four holes. I'm going to go out through one of the middle holes. And I'm going to come in through the bottom hole. Okay, so we're all clear there. Pull that through so I've got a little bit of thread. I'm then going to go out through the same hole I went in the first time. Gonna come in through this hole. And yes, if the clicking is driving you nuts, it's not doing me much favors either. So I'm gonna go out through the top hole. Gonna come back in through the hole I just came, this one. And this will give me two pieces right in the middle. So give them a little bit of a tug so I can tie these off. So what I want to do just to make this easier is I'm going to thread this under here and that will give me something to pull it against. So did I just headbutt you again. So bring that in. Tie this off, give it a little bit of a tug. Don't tug so much that you rip the whole thing. One more knot, one more knot. And I'm gonna come in and just snip that end. This bit can be saved and used in ephemera. Take off the noisy bulldog clips. And that then gives me my journal. What we've done is we've got four holes, 
for a pamphlet stitch. I've done whether that is a four hole pamphlet stitch. It's my version of. So we've sewn on the front panel. We've sewn around the edges with book, book corners on. We've created a nice tight signature. We've got this that's got a flip out on it, which is lovely. So that's another little hidden, a hidden journaling space. And on the other side of it, where's the other side of it gone? You've got this, which is a small panel, which I could add something to. So just really interesting stuff in here, guys. Oh, there was an envelope in that. I thought I put an envelope in. Where's the other side of the envelope gone? There you go. So I actually stitched an envelope in there as well, guys. So that can become a pocket. And where's the other side of it gone? This side could actually have something stuck to it. It could actually be stuck down here and something tucked in there. If you're not going to stick anything on it, make sure you put something to cover that glue because the glue will end up actually sticking to something anyway. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, it's another one. It's an envelope envelope cover, which was the point of this, not so much showing in the signature. The point was to show you how I do an envelope signature. So hopefully that showed you something. And that was number two in the series. So that was number two. That was the cereal box one we did last month. So all it leaves for me is say goodbye now. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And I'm signing off for now. Bye-bye now.